it's, it's lots of work. Lots of work to live here. Um, it's not for wimp. It's not for wimpies. <laughs> lived uh, up on the other side of town, which is only a quarter mile away or so, but during the winter you'd have to get totally dressed up and head out into the blizzard. It'd be uh, pretty challenging just to get to church. Zero to negative 25 in the last couple weeks. So every time we go out, we're putting on our winter pants, our winter boots, our scarves, our hat, our parka, our gloves, our face masks, and if we're going to go by snow go, we put our goggles on, and, and it's, it's worth it <laughs> when you go out. <laughs> and look, for, for one gallon of water is $9.09 if you want distilled water. You pay 99 cents at Walmart, maybe. Alaska, they call the last frontier, and it is the last frontier. Um, basically live the subsistence lifestyle. We catch our fish, we pick our plants, we pick our berries. Um, and the other churches are up north of us and even though they're considered our close neighbors, they're still you know, 150, 200 miles away and there's no airplanes that fly that direction. So we never visit those churches and they never visit us. And telephones are a poor substitute for fellowship in my book. I, I, don't, I don't get a whole lot out of a telephone conversation. Arctic Barnabas exists to be able to bring encouragement to these pastors that are out here. And they don't realize that uh, when they get there, they're beset by the alcohol and drugs and um, suicide. Uh, life in Bush, Alaska is really hard. The first wife that I met out, out in the village hadn't been out for two years and uh, just struggling with depression, didn't even know it. But she started talking the second we got off the plane. It was as if we were immediately her sisters. And um, throughout the next two days, she never stopped talking. I mean, we would have to go to bed at night, but she was still talking. The isolation, the loneliness, the depression. Um, as the sun sets here, you know, the days are very short and the nights are long and cold. It was really cool because later when she emailed me, um, she told us that that time of us coming was her lifeline and that she, don't, she did not know how she would have made it through without that visit. We try to focus on is making the house a home. Because of the harshness of the environment here, it just tears things apart. And you'll spend a considerable amount of time working and surviving and not being able to minister. So if we can take that away from the pastor, come alongside and, and say, we'll help you with those things so that you can focus on what it takes to build those relationships with those people in your church. In the process of doing the building we do, physically, we want to do that spiritual and relationship building as well our ministry family retreat, where once a year we can gather up as many of these families as want to come and bring them to another place and just minister to them and share the word and have a worship service that they're not responsible for. What do these people need right now? Um, I know of a family right now who's really trying to make decisions on are we supposed to be here or are we not supposed to be here? We can fly out to these villages and, and have these face-to-face -face visits. Uh, it's one thing to be able to email and, and call, but to make a home visit in their own home, in their own village, says volumes that uh, it's hard to even express. I'll tell you, from the first time that they came, um, the construction work is uh, kind of the uh, thing that happens on the side. Um, for me, it's, it's the fellowship, it's the sitting around the table at our meals and just joking and trading stories. They call us um, and, and I'm thankful for the family of God that cares like the artist Barnabas does.